Welcome into this week in Missouri politics midweek update. I'm Scott Vaughn, publisher of the Missouri Times, the host of this week in Missouri politics. Uh, let's jump right in. Look up here. Senator Jason Bean's Taste of the South tonight. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this in the next hour, hour and a half, two hours, the mill bottom in Jeff City. If you're around, come by. Uh, Taste of the South, all kinds of food. I'm going to tell you. I, and it's almost good that the Kansas City people are gone because if you have this barbecue from Hickory Log and Dexter, you're never going to like, you're just never going to appreciate Kansas City barbecue again. It is a little known fact. St. Louis doesn't have the best barbecue. It is Hannibal, it is Sedalia. The best barbecue is also not in Kansas City. Oh, it's good. It's good. Best barbecue is in Dexter, Missouri, in the heart of the 25th district. Cinder beans, taste of the South, all kinds of food. Even my favorite uh, Mexican place, my first advertiser, Wallace Margaritas. Um, it is uh, it is taste of the South via Mexico, via Kennett, Poplar Bluff, Columbia, O'Fallon, so on and so forth. Got to thank, first of all, thank my buddy, Air from Independence, a good buddy. The best mustache. It's like John Lamping has the best hair. John, now he's turning with John Lamping and Joe Lake and have the best hair in Missouri politics, no doubt. The best mustache is two folks, the presiding commissioner up in, uh, I believe it's Clark County. I guess they're all Scottish, terrific mustache. And Aaron McMullen, rep from Independence, terrific thing. I've been watching. If you haven't watched George and Tammy yet, you are absolutely missing out. It's a country music style, and I couldn't tell you how much I love it more. It's terrific. But it's terrific. It's uh, it reminds me of that. It's it's outstanding. Country and Western music in America, Stein. Thank you, Aaron. Take me a big slug before we get started. So let's start off. First of all, Quentin Lucas' attack on Southeast Missouri continues, scheduling his parade for the day of Taste of the South. So no one's here. I think Jason is going to have a great turn in spite of. I'm excited about one thing. I think uh, former House Minority Leader Mark Richardson should have been Speaker. Wasn't it for Becky Cook being so so corrupt. Um, uh, we'll be getting honored. I, I am so excited about that. I've looked forward to this day for a month now. Uh, it, it's, I've looked forward to it more than my birthday. I'm excited about seeing Mark and seeing him honored in a town he gave so much to for a well-deserved recognition. I, I'm thrilled about that. Come join us. I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm, I will be indebted to everybody that shows up. I'm so happy about what's going to happen tonight. Um, but the Chiefs is funny. You know, Kelton, this is where the, this is where the problem comes in. Kelton's our terrific producer of, uh, this week of Missouri Politics Midweek Update. I'm watching these people at the Chiefs Parade, right? And here's my thing. I'm a Chiefs fan, legitimately. I'm a Bill Kenny fan, but also a Chiefs fan. Love the Chiefs. Well, I probably watched over half the games. And I'm not a big football fan. I'm, I'm not even a sports fan. I'm a baseball fan. But I, I, I watched most of the games. I watched all the Super Bowl, all the playoffs. Chiefs fan. But I don't feel like I'm Chiefs fan enough to go to the parade, right? It's like I just don't feel like I deserve a parade because my fandom is like 7 of 10. Like I'm a fan. I buy the stuff. Gus, we have the hats. We watch the games. It's great. We're as the more, and I think the more he plays, the older he gets when he plays football. I think I'll be more in, right? But right now he's six. He's not really playing yet. We throw the football around and we watch the games. We watch, watch Gus. He watch about a quarter. Then we throw it around for a quarter. Then we'll watch it a quarter. Uh, I just don't feel like I deserved it, Kelton. Did you? I mean, I, I, I'm just not there. And I like a parade. You know me. I love people, but I just I didn't feel like I deserved a parade. However, I saw people complaining about the chop. You know the oh chop. Here's the thing. You know, a wise person told me once, if you haven't been to two women's sporting events in the last two years without having blood kin in the game, you probably shouldn't talk much about girls' sports. And I'm like, you know, that's right. And I haven't. And nor, God hope, I never find myself in a position in life where I'm at two women's sporting events without being blood related to somebody that's playing in the game in my life ever in the same calendar decade. However, uh, I think the chop, you should have at least spent a thousand dollars in an Indian casino in the last year to have an opinion on the chop. Or if you actually are legitimately native, if you're Rocky Miller, you have a position on the chop, right? If you actually have the card, and Rocky, I've seen Rocky's card is like dope. God, you've never seen this. The card is legit. It's like straight up hard. It's like harder than a driver's license. I mean, it, it's you're a legitimate Indian. Now, Rocky is, is turbid, not headdress, which is disappointing. Uh, but there, he is a legitimate Indian. So if he has an opinion on the chop, okay, fine. Other people are just you're being offended. This is Here's the thing. This is why people don't like people in the Central West End or St. Charles County. You complain too much. You just whine too much. But Keisha Bosley doesn't whine that much. Nor does, does Representative Cameron but, uh, Parker. They just don't whine as much. If you're on the plaza or now it's North Cass County, you just whine too much. Stop 
whining. Stop whining. It's a Super Bowl. Great. Great. It's a great win. And somebody told me the Chiefs are like a they're their fire chief or something, right? I, I don't know. Uh, this guy, there's his dad's on the city uh, county council in Kansas City, or Jackson County told me it was about the fire chief. But either way, not the day for it. Why you got to whine every day? Don't, don't whine. Just rub some dirt on your feelings and walk it off. That's what drinking's for. Sign of knowledge. Tip for you. Write it down. Parents' Bill of Rights. Um, it was being held up by Cinder Moon, Cinder Carter. Uh, if you, a couple others, I think, would have. I, I, look, I think the problem is they can't ban CRT because they can't write down what it is. And so I don't know if this bans it. Nobody I've talked to knows if this bans it. I think it creates a panel if you're in the suburbs and you're offended, which this panel is going to be working their ass off. I promise you. I mean, that's a government job you don't want. Uh, I, I don't know. Look, I think a parent's bill of rights is a great thing. It's what folks want, legitimately want. Uh, and Senator Koenig is a damn wizard at passing stuff. These complicated social bills, uh, it's just, he, he is the social wizard. I mean, good Lord. Uh, he should have a master in social work, actually, after his eight years in the Senate. Uh, I, you know, he did what he should do. He compromised it down to get it done. That's what statesmen do. He did a hell of a job, I thought. Um, walked it through. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know what it does a lot. I do think this is important. If you want to read your kid's curriculum, look, if, if I can buy like Tahitian underwear and get it here in two days, if I can buy fireworks, if I can buy like Swedish steak knives and get it in two days, I, I kind of think it should be in the realm of things possible in the world to read a kid's curriculum. Now, we did some homework here on this week of Missouri Politics Midweek Update. Kelton, now that I have, I am closer to having a, a second Bill of Rights that you do not have as a parent. How many curriculums did your parents and Ashlyn read of yours? Zero. And Kelton put all this stuff together. I mean, he did all this. I mean, this is kind of, he's wanted to do all this. And his parents didn't love him enough to read curriculums. I'm afraid Gussie and Billy's father, they may have the same problem that their father doesn't love them enough to read curriculums. Um, however, uh, I, I did a, I did a survey of the Neelyville School District's uh, Fawn family, and keep in mind if you if I told you Mark and Terry Fawn didn't read my curriculum, you'd be like, well, yeah, they probably didn't. But uh, also, I have a they have another child who's a CPA, uh, so she's pretty bright, right? They didn't read her curriculums either. Um, now I'm sure they like looked at the homework or textbook or something. But but not I got a Z I got a zero for zero on I don't know how many curriculums you have, not a one. And they turned it okay. So I tend to think this is my prediction. Parents' Bill of Rights is a good thing overall. It was a legislative work of, of multiple years to get done. Stein and knowledge tip to Andrew Candy. Hell of a job. However, I'll say this. If you're in St. Charles County right now, you're gonna be angry, right? Complaining about I guarantee you right now. If you're in St. Charles County and you're a white male over the age of three, you're complaining. The chances that you're complaining about something right now is about 95 percent, right? If you are complaining about schools, this is just Stein and knowledge prediction. Take it for what it's worth. Just my white trash hillbilly prediction. You go on the internet and read your kid's curriculum. If you don't find something to complain about that curriculum, I am going to say there's a 100 percent chance that you will still complain about something. Write it down. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. St. Charles County, I think the C stands for complaining. Um, whoever Charles is, Charlie must have been a whining son of a gun. Um, I, so I guess it's good. It's like PBR, which in, in uh, Butler County, I promise you, I don't know about East Butler County, where Todd Marker from and Ron Barr, but in West Butler County and Stringtown, you can pass the Parents' Bill of Rights all you want. But Kelton, do you know what PBR stands for in West Butler County? Would be past blue ribbon, baby, all night long. Sawdust saloon, past blue ribbon, uh, and I'm sure I, I would be. It would be so interesting to me to go to like Naylor, Donovan, go through, go along every. Go. This is this is a study that someone should do. Once the curriculum is on the website, right? Do a study of every school district that touches the Arkansas state line, and see how many clicks that curriculum website gets. And it can't. You can't count the people testing it, like the the website company testing the link. How many, how many parents click the link? I, all right, Kelton, let me just going to go through. They get like Shell Knob, you got Gatewood, Naylor, uh, all the way, Alton, all the way under there. Let's take an over under on how many clicks the websites cumulatively get that isn't from a teacher 
or the web company testing the website? Yeah, I'm thinking I would say nine is high. If you give me if the over under is nine, shoot, I'll probably take the over. But if the over under was 50, I'm taking that under all day long. Starting knowledge prediction. Now, the hit count in St. Charles County is going to be a gajillion. And of the gajillion people that read that in St. Charles County, I'm going to bet you, guess how many read that and go, oh, okay, I'm good. No big deal. Zero. Zero. There will be less people get happy after reading their child's curriculum than there will be people that read the damn thing in real Missouri. Um, Senate passed everything last night. Holy hell. I mean, if you had a Senate bill, Valentine's Day was your day, baby. I mean, it just flew through. There was about 10 senators, maybe 12 in the whole place, right? Everybody had left. Either you went home to see your family, you went over to Kansas City to get free parade partying on. No one was there. It was an interesting mix. You had some folks that were laying their bills over because they want to get to the trans stuff, right? Some folks weren't there. Some folks are truly trying. Senator Laughlin's let's, get, let's All Be Adults initiative. I think some folks have bought into that and are trying their best to do good with that and be cool. Um, and, and you had people that didn't give a damn. And you had folks that were shocked that were things were passing. They didn't want to be the one to drop it. I mean, they were passing things with literally no one even looking at it, right? No questions, nothing. Lincoln Huff passed a major piece. I'm wondering when those guys get back and everybody's here tomorrow to, to third read this stuff, who's going to be like, what the hell? It's going to be interesting to see. I'm going to go over and check out tomorrow and the Senate and just see how surprised they are to realize what they've perfected. Um, then uh, then uh, Burn Scatter Comedy Hour. Uh, before before Passapalooza started, before it turned into the house, just rolling that calendar. Literally, that entire informal cal the entire formal calendar is down to just Mary Elizabeth Senator Coleman's bill. I think it's the one about helping uh, mothers that have had a baby. I didn't. It's a, it's like eighty two or something. It's a big piece of legislation. It'll. I mean, I have a feeling that bill is going to take a while. Uh, but they rolled that whole damn calendar all the way down to that one bit. If you look on the website, there's one bill on the Senate formal calendar. I mean, it, it's 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 probably the busiest <laughs> la, la, Valentine's Day, the St. Valentine Ma Day massacre of the informal of the formal calendar, was probably the most active month <laughs> in the Senate of Fe the most active February in four years. Probably the most active 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 month was last night, if I had to guess. So I mean, look what what Senator Laughlin said. You say what you will, it's working. What are you gonna do? You want to see the Senate move? It's moving. Moving like a freight train. They may have outdone that by tomorrow. They may have third read more bills in the House. No shit. Um, Senator Burns got her comedy hour. Oh, the best hour of the Senate. The best hour. Denny Hoskins has this really good film test credit bill. You ever remember Ozark was not filmed in Missouri? It's because we're just, we don't, you have, you have the folks that want to run it like a business versus the folks that want to run it like a Facebook account. So you want to run the state like a business, you do smart investments in your state. Um, Generally, it's very hard for some folks. A lot of folks want to run the state like a Facebook account, like whatever people whine and complain about, they want to do that or not do that. So Senator Bernscatter, it's a great bill. He knows it. They took Senator Hoskins' bill up. Now, Senator Hoskins is, uh, he's part of the artist formerly known as the Conservative Caucus. And so Senator Bernscatter, he just got the best hard pan, dry humor. Like that, that's just probably as happy as you could see Mike Bernscatter in public. Um, he was so happy with himself. He was inquiring of all of the artists formerly known as the Conservative Caucus members and asking them the same just shit-ass questions they would ask everyone else. And it was so great. He was so good at it. And he does carry a lot of respect in that room. That, that Denny Hoskins, whose bill it was, he just went along. He didn't poke the bear. And I think, now I, I know Senator Hoskins very well. I really think it's because in his own mind he goes, okay, his body language is, we deserve some of this, right? Okay, I'll take it. Senator Eigel took it in perfect humor. Um, it was uh, it was almost irony to the point you could literally touch the irony. Like I could cut it with my skull can, irony. Uh, I'd, if you'd have thrown the skull up in the air, the irony would have caught the skull midair. And it got even funny. And I, it was the best thing. And it really ultimately lowered the tensions because he didn't kill the bill. I think Senator Burns got to know there's probably a good piece of legislation. However, let's just be real. If we're just talking hogs, dogs, and laws, here's the old hillbilly pal. They would not have let that bill pass last year if it didn't have Denny's name on it. I mean, that's just real. But they, the, 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 the senders that were formed with the conservative caucus took it very much in stride. Denny Hoskins especially took it in stride. And it, his body language and his verbal 
was almost like, okay, I kind of have this coming a little bit. And you did get the sense in the room that Cinder Burnscatter probably wasn't going to actually kill the piece of legislation. And he did. It got perfected. It'll be up for third read um, uh, tomorrow. I guess it's on the third read calendar. They're all coming back. If they don't all get arrested by the political correct police at the parade for doing a chop or something that offends someone. Um, again, tonight, Cinder Beans deal right here. Mill bottom in about 45 minutes. Uh, Wash U. Boy, another rough day for Wash U. Uh, look, I, I have a lot of empathy for someone who uh, feels like they need to transition from the sex that they were born in or with the body parts. Or Look, I'm going to tell you also, it's hard to talk about these things sometimes. I went to a press conference today and there were two people who were clearly dressed as women. Uh, I'm to the point where I don't even, hell, I don't even know what to say. I wouldn't offend any of people that's going through a hard time for anything in the world. Sometimes I don't even know what the hell to say, to be honest with you. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm not sure exactly how to say this. But, but, but Kelton, help me out here. I'm going to drag you into this, right? You're sitting with mind your own business working. Um, so these folks told a story about how they were 14, 15, had some surgical procedures done, took some drugs that, that were probably part of a normal, I took it as a normal transgender work, right? Well, then they had, then it, they, it, they didn't want to do that as they got older. They realized it wasn't the move. They changed their mind. Kind of goes, uh, is it really, I mean, as compelling as the story is of someone that wants to transgender, cha- transition to a different gender, these, these stories are very compelling. Um, this on top of the incredible stories of what the whistleblower talked about, the Wash U transgender clinic, I guess it is, where they were um, maybe not going through a lot of protocols before prescribing kids some uh, some transgender medications. Uh, I think there's a lot more to that story that's going to come out. Uh, that story is either going to go down and open up a huge wealth of information nobody's ever known, or it's going to be proven false. Because, I mean, if her, if her account is even close to true, oh, my God. I mean, it, it is a, a striking thing. And so, obviously, the question goes, because the biggest fight right now in the legislature is uh, schools. And, and should, you, should you have charter schools everywhere uh, and get rid of your public schools? Um, and so Wash U has the biggest charter school in St. Louis. Uh, it's actually not far from the Wash U transgender clinic as the crow flies. Uh, so obviously it was asked by a very studious, uh, measured, handsome member of the people watching the uh, press conference to Senator Hoskins. I was like, well, you know, Senator Hoskins, you know, Wash U that, that does this where the, all the allegations are flying from in Missouri. These two, these two individuals were not from not Missouri. One was a Nebraskan, was Californian, by the way. Uh, well, would you, after seeing this and seeing the allegations of, from the whistleblower at Wash U, would you allow your kid to go to a charter school that was um, uh, that was ran by Wash U? And he took about a half second to say no. <laughs> and then I asked you the follow-up question. Uh, do you think that Rob Bennett, do you think that um, Floyd Berger, do you think that Dan House, you think David Pierce would let their kids go to a charter school ran by Wash U right now? And he's like, well, no. Um, interesting. So Senator Moon has been on this from the beginning. And you know what? You know, sometimes Senator Moon can uh, can come off um, a little different. Some of the issues he takes on are some that, that that I'm they're hard for me to relate to. But I'll tell you today, Senator Mike Moon was on a game. There was no joking. There was no, he was, he was clicking. I mean, it sounded like, it sounded like it could have been a preacher at a Pentecostal church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. He was on. Uh, I asked him, he, he wanted to do an investigation into this. Now, he asked leadership. He got a paper signed by some folks to do, do an investigation. He, I asked him at the press conference, what's happened today? He said, well, the leadership says no. Now, look, you know me. If you watch this, you know. Campaign contributions are important. I do not think people jump through near the hoops the Post and the Star try to placate and put out pe- that people do for campaign contributions. I just don't buy it. I just don't believe it. Do I think they matter? Yes. Do I think it's the end-all, be-all of corruption? No, I don't. Um, however, one of the biggest funders of folks who probably voted for Senator Rowden in the last cycle was Wash U alumni, donors, a, a group loosely like Right Path PAC. Now they lost a lot of races, but they did help some folks, and they did they did go through a lot of money, uh, either helping elect reelect some senators 
or attempting to elect some other senators. That said, it was enough that raises your eyes and you start to wonder, well, you kind of get the sense. Now, Kel, follow me here. If Columbia Public Schools opened up a transgender studies thing kind of right there by the school, right? And maybe some kids were going from the school to the transgender clinic. And then a whistleblower came out and made half the allegations it's been made against Wash U. Do you maybe think that there could be a Senate panel brought together to investigate Columbia Public Schools? Am I just hillbilly dumb? Or could that maybe, if you just change the names a little bit from Wash U to Columbia Public Schools, would this be handled the same? Now, if you're telling me charter schools or public schools and all that, are they? Because I don't know that it's treated quite the same. Now, I, I don't believe that it's exclusively about a campaign contribution. I think that there's some folks that want to do, they want to close places like Nineveh, they want to close places like Windsor, they want to close places like Holcomb, and, and, and send that money to charter schools, and they don't want bad press. And I, and I understand that. But the more this stuff comes out, I think you may see some committees just say, the hell with it, we're going to move ahead on our own. This is the Senate, right? Um, so it was interesting. I asked Senator Moon, I was like, uh, there's a bill that's came through um, the Senate Education Committee that would send even more money to the WashU Charter School. Just shove them full of cash. Let them grow all, let, them, let Wash U come everywhere, right? How do you think the old folks in Lutzville are going to think when Wash U comes and puts up them a charter school slash transgender studies group? <laughs> um, but Mike Moon, who I think had voted for the ESA thing, if I'm not mistaken, he was hard no. He said, I will not. He's going to add it to his thing to text their endowment. Look, I, I think there's going to be some bumpy road ahead for Wash U. And I think those contributions are going to start to be scrutinized, um, not by St. Louis media because they don't want to piss off Wash U, um, but by Kansas City media, Springfield, maybe some your conservative outlet, you know, may start to ask some questions. Um, and I do think, and I will be, I will always preface it with, you know, I'm not a believer. I think contributions factor into everything. I think they're a deciding factor in nothing. Um, I've just not seen it. I know that you've, if you watch, if you're in politics and you read political coverage, you're conditioned to think everything's about that and everything's awful and all that. I'm not, a, I'm not a buy. I don't buy into that. Uh, but I do think that sometimes I've watched this in politics. Sometimes you give so much money. Like I've seen some attorney generals once they've taken so much money from someone. They almost have to prosecute for stuff, right? Because they've taken so much money. Um, you may see some folks that have to do this because I think Andrew Bailey, I mean, if you're, I mean, let's just paint a picture here. You're Andrew Bailey and you're running, you're attorney general. You can investigate anything you want and you're running for reelection. Your announced opponent is a St. Louis and from an elite college um, who lives very near Wash U. Um, I just think politics says you're going to probably investigate this pretty deeply, right? Uh, anyone would in that situation. I do think he'll stay on the right side of the over investigatory stuff. But I'll tell you, it's, it, I bet if you ask Missouri Republicans, it'd be impossible to look too much into this for Andrew Bailey, which is going to, in one way, is the Senate can say, well, the AG is doing it. In another way, well, why can't you? So it's going to be, it's going to be wild. Industry. This is going to have a lot more turns. It's going to intersect with the charter school debate already has. Um, it, it's going to be a very interesting interesting thing. And I'll just tell you this, your old hillbilly pal does get a little tired sometimes. Tired of being right. So many times, time after time, after time, after time. Your old hillbilly pal told you, folks, it's fine to be woke. That's your decision. Politically, personally, however you want to be. But if you're saying you need charter schools in Centerville, Missouri, in in, in 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 Arnold, if you need a charter school in uh, in Defiance, well, that's fine. But to say the public schools are super woke and the conservative choice is this, the dog just wasn't going to hunt forever because it's not real. It's a very liberal group. Now, I'll tell you this. My personal opinion is, it's not a knowledge poll here. Thank you, my buddy Aaron McMullen again from Independence, Truman's hometown. As my friend Victor Callahan from Callahan Endorsed would say, uh, the only man to drop 
two nuclear bombs. Uh, Victor's proud of his hometown for such desserts. This is from the wet, the the uh, the the White House down in Key West, Harry Truman's little White House that he built. I think it's because those communities are very liberal, right? I think that the communities the charter schools are in are very very liberal. Therefore, you get a very very liberal brand of politics associated with them, and I, I think that's the truth. But I also think just stop traffic here. The same thing is true about Columbia Public Schools. Very very liberal people in Columbia. You get a very, very liberal public school. Sometimes they're a reflection of the folks. It's not some sinister thing. It just is what it is. With that, I will tell you this. If you, I'm going to tell you this. If you're in town for Senator Beans, Taste of the South, and you haven't booked your hotel room, or you're like, oh, I'm going to go see if it's fun. If I have a good time, I better get a hotel. I don't want to drive back. I'm going to tell you, my bet stands. Guess what happened, Kelton Turner? Guess what happened to me Monday night at the Senate bowling tournament, which Lincoln Hub's team won. They probably cheated. But I think probably when you're the probes chair, you they just let you win. I'm not sure Huff's even a very good bowler. He probably isn't. Probably Schwartz. I bet Schwartz is a good bowler. Schwartz is going to be our new city councilman, God willing. Um, if you're going to book, you get out there having a good time, get a book your hotel room. Go. The twenty dollar bet is on. If you if, if the courtyard by your marriage is within twenty bucks, book the courtyard. If you don't love it, if it's not forty dollars better than wherever you were going to book, if you don't see everybody in politics you want to see. If you don't, if it is not the premier, premier, top of the line, man's man, woman's woman, pro's pro choice, I'll give you this. You come find me. I'm easy to find. Uh, try 225 Madison. Try High Street Pub or the Senate Gallery. You got a great shot of finding me. Um, I'm going to pay this 20 bucks. But, but if you book the Courtyard by Marriott and it's outstanding, if it's over $20 value and you owe me a Bud Light, just straight up fair. That's just the hillbilly way, right? I got my eighth Courtyard by Marriott Bud Light at the Senate Bowling Tournament uh, because I gave them good advice, and they're good people. Uh, again, if you're around half hour, any time tonight until I think it's 8 o'clock or so, buddy Jesse, Charles Ham the third's playing, Centerpiece, Taste of South, Mill Bottom, come by. I hope you come and watch a man that should be honored get honored. I am tickled. It's, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm not going to say I'm Christmas happy or opening day happy, but I'm like 38th birthday happy. To see Mark get this, to, to see Mark be awarded, he deserves it. It is, it is, a, it is acknowledgments. Don't think you do too many acknowledgments. And if you like, if you, I better be careful. I say this, but if you like the Missouri Times, if you like this show, if you like our TV show, uh, I promise you there would not be one without a Mark Richardson. Thank you guys. Sunday on the show, Dean Plocker, Jason Smith from in here, from right in here in the streaming studio, uh, Travis Smith and uh, Representative uh, Bridget Walshmore. All from the state capitol in the streaming studio Sunday morning on this week, Missouri Pop.